Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about uh, RabbitMQ. Uh, so in a previous document, we spoke about how to connect with RabbitMQ via a console application, but uh, the RabbitMQ was already configured for that to happen. So this time we are going to show you the full process. And instead of connecting uh, via a console application, we are going to connect with an Azure function. But uh, this one is kind of special. Of course, later in the process, we are going to connect with a logic app because we already know we integrate everything with logic apps. So the purpose of this proof of concept, this BOC, is to create um, a queue and to receive a message in a queue, in this case, in the RabbitMQ, and that event triggers the other function into what we pretend. But first things first, to connect with RabbitMQ and to even make the connection, we are going to use a virtual machine. And there are other ways to work with RabbitMQ, but this is one of them. So how do we make a virtual machine? Uh, we are going to create one inside a resource group. And uh, to make things correctly, we are going to use specific names that you should use too. So uh, first, we search for resource groups in the portal search bar. And next, click on Create. Choose your subscription and uh, give it the name that we are giving you uh, in the in the presentation, Azure Container App RG. Next, inside the resource group, we are going to add a resource. In this case, it will be a virtual machine, but we are going to do it in a different way. Inside the resource group, click on Create. Next, the marketplace will open, so you can choose from a vast number of resources. But uh, let's be specific and search for RabbitMQ package by Bitnami and click on create. A new window will open and also click on create. Now, this is how you should configure it. Use your subscription and the resource group automatically will be the one we created since we are creating this resource directly in the resource group. Next, for the virtual machine name, use RabbitMQ. We have an error there because we already have a VM created with that name. But this is just to show you the process. Next, choose your region. And as for availability options, choose no infrastructure redundancy required. Next, the security type as standard. And the image, by default, is already the one mentioned here. If not, choose that one. As for the size, you can choose also the same as we did. It is not an expensive plan. Next, as for authentication, choose password and choose a username and a password. You will need it further in the process. Next, click on review and create and after validation, click create. Wait for the deployment to be succeeded and click on go to resource. Once inside the resource, you can click on connect. Next, click on SSH, and in here, where it says run the example command below to connect to your VM, you are going to need only this, SSH, username followed by the IP address. You will have your own IP address and the username you choose earlier when you configure the virtual machine. Now, open the Microsoft Azure command prompt console and write the SSH username followed by the IP. In this case, this is not the username or IP address we are using. This is just to show you how you should configure it. It will then ask you, are you sure you want to continue connecting? Yes slash no. And you should write yes and press enter. Next, it will request you to write your password. This password is the one you define it when you create the virtual machine. While writing it, it will not appear in the console. So do not worry, it is normal. After typing it, press enter. Next, this is what you should see. We can now verify that we are logged in the virtual machine and that this VM is available in the public IP we specified earlier in the process of starting the console. You also have some links for documentation from Bitnami if you want to explore them. Now, if you want to use RabbitMQ to produce messages or create queues and also to consume them, we need to expose the 5672 port, so we can connect from outside to this virtual machine. In order to do that, we need to run some comments. In this case, Azure CLI comments. 
and you can use PowerShell to do this. So let's open the 5672 port. Using PowerShell, you will need to run the first command we declare in this presentation. In here, you specify the port to be open, 5672, and the name of the VM, RabbitMQ, also the resource group. If you do this without being logged, it will automatically ask you to log your credentials to Azure Portal, and then you can run the command again. If you are already logged in, you just run the command. While this command is getting executed, let's also open the port for the management UI which is used to connect to RabbitMQ management capabilities. So, by default, this is exposed in the 15672. So, it is the same command, but with the 15672 as the port, and we also give a priority to 1100. You can run this command on another PowerShell window. Once these ports are open, we can then communicate with this virtual machine. So let's open the browser and let's connect to this particular port. So copy the IP address on the virtual machine, followed by the 15672 port, and then you will have access to the RabbitMQ management. But as you can see, you need a username and a password. There is a default username and password created by Bitnami, and for this proof of concept we are using that. In order to uncover the password, we can run this command on the still open Microsoft Azure command prompt console. And as you can see, after running that command, you are gifted with a username and a password that you can now use to access the RabbitMQ management. Now with these credentials, log in into the RabbitMQ management, and this should be what you will see. You can explore it your own way, but for the sake of this proof of concept, we are going to focus on the queues and on the admin panel. The purpose of this proof of concept is to have an Azure function that connects to RabbitMQ and that triggers every time a message is published into a certain queue. So to achieve this, we have first to create two things, one queue and one virtual host. Since the queue are living inside the virtual host, we first create a virtual host. And to do that, go inside the admin panel by clicking on admin and then on virtual hosts. By default, you already have one vhost created, but the name of that virtual host is a slash and this may create some conflict on the long run. So create a new one. It is simple as just typing the name you want and click on Add Virtual Host. As we already have some virtual hosts created, let's focus on the MyVHost v2. Now let's move into the queues and create a queue. It is also a simple process. First choose your virtual host because it will be there that the queue will be hosted. Next, give a name to the queue and click on Add Queue. As you can see, we already have some queues created, so let's focus on the RabbitMQ v3. So what do we know by now? We know that we have a queue named RabbitMQ v3 hosted in a virtual host named MyVHost v2. And what can we do with that? We can publish messages into that queue, and they will be there until a consumer consumes them out of that queue. And how can we create a consumer? We will have our other function to take care of that. But first, click on the queue you just created, and this is what you should see. No messages yet. Now if you scroll down into Publish Message and publish a message into the queue, you will now notice that the queue has one message published waiting to be consumed. And there comes the tricky part. How can we consume messages as soon as they enter the queue? In a previous document, I already explained how to create a console app that sends messages into RabbitMQ, and another to consume them. But what we pretend here is to have another function that triggers as soon as a message enters the queue, and then that message is sent into a logic app. And there are a few tricks to make this work, but first and foremost, we start creating another function. In Visual Studio, click on Create a new project, choose Other Functions and give your other function a name that makes sense to you and to your co-workers. Do not forget, start using proper names from day one. Choose the location of your other function. Click Next, and now you need to configure some fields. Choose the .NET 6.0 framework and choose the RabbitMQ trigger. And you can name the connection string RabbitMQ connection. And you can add the name of the queue you created previously. In our case, RabbitMQ v3. Click on Create, 
After this, you will have already a pre-created Azure function code. As you can see, in the pre-created code, you have the connection string setting value that is the RabbitMQ connection that we defined while creating the Azure function. At the NuGet packages, we make a reference in your solution. On the file local.settings.json is where you will store the connection string. That will make it possible to connect with RabbitMQ. And to do that, this is how the string should look like. Username, followed by your password, your IP, and a port that by default is 5672, and your vhost name. With only this and a few more steps, you will be able to consume the messages from the queue you defined on your Azure function slash RabbitMQ. But since we want to send the content of the message that entered the queue into a logic app, we will modify the function to do that. And what does this Azure function do? This Azure function is triggered by a RabbitMQ message in a specified queue. When a message arrives, the function is executed and performs the following steps. First, logs an information message indicating that the function has been triggered. Second, prepare the payload for a request by creating an object with a message property containing the content of the RabbitMQ message. Third, serializes the payload object into a JSON string. Fourth, creates an HTTP request with the JSON payload as the content and sets the content type to application slash JSON. Fifth, defines the URL of the logic app that will be the recipient of the HTTP request. Sixth, sends the HTTP request to the logic app using the URL payload. Seventh, checks the response status of the request. If the request is successful, logs an information message indicating that the request was sent to the logic app successfully. If the request fails, logs an error message indicating the failure and includes the status of the response. In summary, this other function acts as a bridge between RabbitMQ and the logic app. It receives messages from RabbitMQ, sends them as a JSON payload to the specified logic app via an HTTP request and logs the success or failure of the request. Now prepare a logic app consumption. We name ours LA process message from RabbitMQ POC. And as for the trigger, choose when a HTTP request is received. Save the logic app and copy the URL generated into your Azure function. Now almost there. Publish the Azure function. After having the Azure function published, go into the function app in the Azure portal and choose the Azure function you just created. Next, go to configuration and click on new application setting. On the name, give the same name as the connection string in the Azure function, RabbitMQ connection. And as for the value, use the same connection string that is inside the local.settings.json file. Next, click OK and click on save. All that we have left is to test it. Open the function app on Azure portal and click on the Azure function. On the left panel, click on monitor and let it connect into the application insights. Next, go into the RabbitMQ queue and publish a message. As you can see, we have a consumer now that is connected into this queue. In this case, it is our Azure function that is listening for new messages. So next, publish the message. And now on the logs on the app insights, you can see that a message has been processed, the content of the message, and that it was sent to the logic app successfully. Now on the logic app side, we can check our latest run and confirm that we received the same message. So right now the POC is completed. We have another function that listens a queue in RabbitMQ and triggers as soon as a new message is received and process that message into sending it into a watch cap. What to do with those messages is up to you. You can have multiple appliances to it, like redirect them into another service or build a watch cap around them to some purpose. We hope you have enjoyed this POC as much as we did and we will see you in the next one.